Contaminants are substances or a group of substances that are toxic, persistent and liable to bioaccumulate which give rise to an equivalent level of concern. Food contaminants are substances that are not intentionally added to food. These substances may be present in food due to environmental contamination or through various stages of its production, packaging, transport or holding. There are three main sources of contamination which are physical, biological and chemical. Physical contaminants are substances such as broken pieces of glass, fingernails or hair that become part of a food mixture. They may not change or damage the food itself but can create health hazards to the consumers. Biological contaminants are substances produced by living creatures such as rodents, pests or microorganisms including bacteria, viruses, fungi and protozoa. The examples are bacterial, viral or parasite contamination that is transferred through saliva, test droppings, blood or fecal matter. Chemical contaminants include any chemical substances that contaminate the food. It poses a potential risk to food safety depending on the concentration present and their respective toxicities. In this video, we would like to share with you about one of the chemical contaminants, acrylamide. Acrylamide, an organic compound with chemical formula of C3H5NO, also known as 2-propanamide is a colorless, non-volatile crystalline solid that is soluble in water. It is an industrial chemical primarily formed in plant-based starchy foods during the heating process. It is found very low in animal-based food products such as meat and fish. The level of acrylamide present varies according to the difference in food composition and high temperature, carbohydrate, free asparagine, reducing sugar, pH, water content, and ammonia bicarbonate. Acrylamide is formed in food prepared or cooked at high temperatures. It is formed via different routes, but the major pathway is a mallet reaction from free asparagine and reducing sugars. Mallet reaction is not a single reaction, but a complex series of reactions that occur during the thermal processing of food. During this non-enzymatic reaction, the R-amino group of free asparagine reacts with a carbonyl source and forms a shift base. When heated, the decarboxylation of shift base occurs, leading to amylate intermediates that can directly release acrylamide. Recent studies have indicated that another compound called 3 amino propanamide can also be formed during the amylate reaction and can be converted to acrylamide under aqueous conditions. This compound has been identified in cocoa beans, coffee, and cereal products. In 1994, the International Agency for Research on Cancer classified acrylamide as a potential carcinogen to humans based on its carcinogenicity in rodents. This classification was then endorsed by the WHO consultation in 2002. The reports on its carcinogenic effect in humans has caused a worldwide concern. It was found that the tumors occur in rodents due to exposure of acrylamide. However, this does not reflect that tumor will also arise in humans result of exposure to the same carcinogen. According to research by Rice 2005, findings of the epidemiological studies on comparative cancer incident in human populations who receive different intensity and duration of acrylamide exposure reveal no increase of cancer risk. Exposure to acrylamide in diet and beverages also have been studied and found no increase in cancer risk via acrylamide intake. However, studies that have been done so far only focus on acrylamide alone. Possible interactions with other substances have not yet been considered. Hence, it is suggested that the carcinogenic effects of acrylamide may be modified significantly by co-exposure to other substances that share this common metabolic pathway. A study was used to determine and analyze the level of acrylamide in nine different types of processed foods, which are potato chips, chips except potato chips, biscuits, french fries, tea, breakfast cereals, chocolate products, season level, and nuts products. The analytical method used is liquid chromatography tandem mass spectrometry LCMS-MS method. What is LCMS-MS? 
It is the combination of high-performance liquid chromatography HPLC units with two mass spectrometry detectors. Liquid chromatograph LC separates compound within a sample, concentrating the amount of each single component, whereas mass spectrometer MS provides mass-to-charge ratio data which can help to provide structural identity of the compound. The reason of using LC-MS-MS method is because this analytical method for acrylamide was validated with regard to sensitivity, linearity, limits of detection LOD, limits of quantification LQ, precision, and accuracy. This method allows for detection of low-level contaminants with a high degree of specificity and sensitivity as well as accurate quantitation. The data of this method provides information about the molecular weight, structure, identity, and quantity of specific sample components. Also, this method can be applied to most organic compounds because it is suitable for the analysis of large, polar, ionic, thermally unstable, and non-volatile compounds. Table 1 shows the result of this study. For the results, we could observe that the potato chips has the highest acrylamide level among the 9 analyzed processed fruits, whereas nut products contain the lowest acrylamide level. The maximum amount of acrylamide was 1435 microgram per kilogram and was found in potato chips. Because various cooking conditions such as type of frying oil, frying period, and temperature as well as raw material itself, the potato, and location, climate, and storage of the potatoes affect the level of acrylamide. The tea of various roasted grains such as oligonatum odoratum, cassiatora, buckwheat, and barley grain were used in this study. The amounts of acrylamide quantified in some roasted grain tea were high. According to a previous study, the roasted barley grains for Mungija tea usually process at 350 to 400 degrees Celsius for a few minutes, contain 200 until 600 microgram per kilogram acrylamide. Therefore, the roasting time and temperature affect the acrylamide level in tea. The acrylamide levels in potato chips and tea suggest that it may be possible to reduce levels in some foods through processing changes. The acrylamide concentration in non-potato-based chips was lower compared with that of potato chips. Thus, acrylamide accumulation appears to be relatively high in potatoes due to high temperature cooking relative to other carbohydrate-based materials. The conclusion for this study is that quantitative analysis of acrylamide in nine different types of processed foods were analyzed by using LCMSMS. Besides, acrylamide concentrations in the different food products and the lines range between not detectable concentrations and 1,435 microgram per kilogram. The levels of acrylamide in processed foods can be affected by special food constituents and reaction products as well as different processing methods. The first processing condition is the frying time and temperature. Higher temperature and longer durations of thermal processing are associated with higher acrylamide content. Next, soaking. Pre-soaking causes the glucose content in the potato strips to be reduced with increased soaking time. Water soaking results in lower acrylamide content due to the leaching of one important acrylamide precursor such as glucose. Blanching. Blanching in hot or warm water reduces the amount of acrylamide in french fries. As the blanching temperature and duration increase, more glucose and asparagine are being leached out leading to french fries with lower acrylamide levels. Exits In an acidic condition, soaking in a low pH solution has been shown to stop the formation of the shift phase that leads to acrylamide formation. Water activity Acrylamide is formed in food with water activity between 0.4 and 0.8. When the water activity is less than 0.4, the formation of acrylamide is decreased. Fermentation Lactic acid fermentation was reported to be suitable in reducing acrylamide formation in potato products, especially when combined with blanching. Ways to reduce acrylamide in the food preparations and cooking First, decrease cooking time. 
This is because more acrylamide accumulates when cooking is done for longer periods or at higher temperatures. Second, blanching potatoes before frying and post drying. It helps to reduce acrylamide formations during cooking. Aim for a golden yellow color or lighter when frying, baking, toasting, or roasting of starchy foods. And follow the cooking instructions on the pack when cooking packaged food like chips and roast potatoes. Thirdly, keep the cooking oil quality at its best by skimming, often to remove crumbs and food particles left in the oil. Also, filter, change oils, and clean cooking equipment as often as needed. Last but not least, do not keep raw potatoes in the fridge to avoid the formation of more free sugars in the potatoes, a process called cold sweetening, which can increase overall acrylamide levels, especially if the potatoes are then fried, roasted, or baked.